everybody. All right, today we're gonna to be working on some sewing skills. So I have a worksheet for you where we're going to be following these steps and you have today to complete it. The first step that we're gonna do is just to measure and cut on arm's length of thread. So measuring an arm's length just means you're holding it in one hand, stretching it out basically to your armpit. And then that's about how long that we need to work with today. So we will cut it there. And our next step is threading the needle. Threading the needle, you pinch the end of your thread and you're going to go through the eye of the needle. Now, these are really, really big eyes on these needles. And uh, I like to use tapestry needles, so they're a little bit thicker and they have a nice sharp point. And then we're going to want to make the two ends meet and we have to tie a knot. Knot tying can be a little tricky for people. There's a few different ways to tie a knot. Um, one is just to grab a loop here, pull this end through, and I kind of use my other fingers to scrunch up to the end, okay? That just gives you a single knot. If you want to, you could repeat that a second time. Okay, there, that gives you a pretty good size knot. We're just sewing through paper today, so it does not have to be a very big knot. All right, that was step three. Step four, we're gonna sew a running stitch. Running stitch is probably the most simple kind of stitch. For that, on the worksheet, we have some dots. You have a start line, you have an end line. You can start above. I typically like to come from underneath, so that means trying to poke up from the bottom. This will hide your knot so it doesn't show. And then you're gonna go, you wanna Spread your fingers out so you don't poke yourself through there. So we're going down, pull, don't pull too tight because we're using paper. Find the next dot, poke up, and repeat. Down, pull through, up, okay. And you're just going to finish this off. You could even kind of bend the paper. See how I'm poking through more than one hole at a time, like that. And then pull through. Okay, so I'm at the end here. I'm gonna tie a knot, which means I can put my needle through the hole. Use my fingers to kind of scrunch it down towards the bottom and cut it off. If you have enough, You'll be able to continue sewing. If you don't, then you're going to want to repeat steps one through three. I'm just going to work with what I have here. Another way to tie a knot is a little trickier, but if you're holding the end of your thread and then the tip of the needle and you wrap around, oopsie, around the tip of your needle and then try to slide that down the shaft of the needle and then I'm holding pretty tight with my fingernails and my fingers and pull tight. That's another way to get a knot. I had a volunteer in my classroom show me that one time. Okay, our last stitch that we're doing today is the whip stitch. Whip stitch means that we're gonna be going around. So similar to last time, I'm poking from the back. Okay, and we do whip stitches along edges. So I'm gonna come around, poke up, whip around, poke up, whip around, and I'm gonna run out of thread here, guys, but you get the idea. So you have two stitches, very similar, but different. They're good ways to join two pieces of material. The running stitch can even be used as a decorative stitch. So I didn't quite get to the end, but you would wanna tie another knot and then finish that off, okay? So you will cut, tie a knot, return the needle, and then this sewing skill sheet, make sure your name and your code is on it. And then just turn it in to me when you're finished.